Hello and welcome back to the Schmuseum. Now, as you guys may have recently seen, Tim's currently away on a Euro road trip. So myself and Brad are going to be bringing you along some of the highlights that happen here at the cow shed whilst he's away. Now, to begin with, we've got a few cars missing. Firstly, the ones he's taken with him, which is the AMG GTR Roadster, currently replaced by the Segway go-kart, and the Cayman GT4, currently replaced by the Porsche Taycan, which is not in its usual charging bay because it's fully charged, and whilst he's away, well, I'm not going near that, so that can stay exactly where it is. Now, we've got a few things coming up this week, some that we know of, and some, as always is the case, that we probably don't. But first on the agenda is taking the little GR Yaris and taking it for a running in service. Now, that's not anything that's officially needed, but it has just gone over a thousand miles. And just to preserve the life of the car, I think it's best that we'll get that done so we can start pushing on a little bit harder in that. Secondly, would be the other four-wheel drive manual hot hatchback, the Focus RS, which is coming up due for its third year service now. And it's MOT, which is its first one. So we'll be running that over to get that sorted as well. Now, as you may have seen, we've got the little Clio here in the lineup as well, which still looks absolutely silly. Currently replacing the SLS Black Series, which is up at Cambridge Car Audio, having the work finalized on that. And obviously missing from the lineup here as well, we've got the GT Black Series currently having its respray at Chartwell. More to come on that on the Shmi 150 channel very soon, I'm sure. And of course the GT500, which is still over in the USA. Now, as you guys may have seen recently, it's a bit of a struggle keeping up with the dust in here, settling on the cars and just keeping them clean as we'd like with not necessarily having the time. So we've got some guys coming around tomorrow to help us out with that and get, well, as many as they can cleaned in a day. Now, one thing I think we're really going to struggle with whilst Tim is away is staying off of this thing over here, which you may have recently seen on the channel, which is our new simulator, which we've been playing with and, well, it's really rather addictive. So I think we may have to keep this turned off or we'll just spend most of our time in this and not actually get any of that done that we've just spoken about. But let's see how the week goes and see what comes up. Tom, I thought we said we weren't going to jump straight onto the sim. No, you said that. I didn't say that. Did I say that? <laughs> okay, maybe. But this morning before he left, Tim left this setup in the AMG GT3 on the Nürburgring and laid down a time. So I just figured it wouldn't take me long to beat him very quickly. I mean, we've got plenty of time while he's away to, to set some lap times and then challenge him when he comes back. Yes. But in his video, he did set a six minute something. It may have been 6.30, I can't remember exactly. But he set a lap time in the AMG GT3 around the Nordschleife Tourist de Farten. Do we have access to his footage? Can we confirm what the time is exactly? Or, or do we just go and set a ridiculously silly time? I think if you time? just set a crazy time, we can Photoshop it. If we need to Photoshop it, we'll Photoshop it. We, we'll never know. I don't think we need to. I mean, we actually had a brief go on this yesterday when it arrived in, I think it was the Cayman GT4 Club Sport uh, around the Nürburgring. And I'm not going to reveal what the lap times are, but I might say Tim wasn't at the top and he's not particularly happy about that. But of course, he does have the benefit that he's gone off to the real Nürburgring to go and practice and play for real. Whereas as good as this is, it's still not quite as the real deal, is it? No, no, definitely not. And I'm sure at some point we'll be able to do some laps of the Nürburgring in real life ourselves. But yes. this isn't a bad way to be able to do it. And I'm sure, as I've said, for the next week or so, we will maybe do more laps than Tim even does. I think we will get pretty good with this before he's back. And one benefit I've just realized of not being at the real Nürburgring if I was to now stuff it into a wall, which of course you hope you don't, but if I did, well, I can just hit restart and not pay the Nürburgring a massive bill, which is it's a nice feeling. The back wall of this museum seems to have become the parts wall. I mean, we need to figure out what to do with it at some point. We've got center parts, we've got the exhaust system from cars. Speaking of exhaust, Brad, you know we said there might be some things pop up we don't know about. Yes. Well, turns out I completely forgot the standard exhaust for the Cayman GT4. It's currently still at JZM. So I think we need to hop in the G63 and go and grab it. It might fit in the M3, and I suspect it probably would, but I don't know how much of it is there. So I think we'll jump in the G63, head up to JZM, and go and collect sanded exhaust and add some more to this um, 
yeah. pile of Just parts. Just when I thought we might be able to come up with a plan and tidy it up, you've thrown another metal exhaust system into the mix. I didn't change it, that was Tim. Blame Tim, but we do need to go and get it and add to the mess. Sorry about that one. We're down here at JZM to collect the exhaust. And while we're here, we couldn't not have a look around at a few of the bits they have in the showroom. First of all, 918 Spider belongs to JK, Jamiroquai, who you may know. Coming back, we've got something really interesting here. You may have just heard that was a Murcielago starting up. <laughs> we've got a really interesting bit of kit here. This is a 991.2 GT2 RS Club Sport. There was only 200 of these, and this is one that's actually raced with Iron Force Racing under the number 69. A few other bits we've got in here. Let's keep moving over. Lovely 987 Spider, which is famous for having quite a difficult roof and they are a bit of a pain but over here we have the first ever 911 turbo cabriolet the 930 we have a near delivery mileage right hand drive 911r and here we have an absolutely stunning 997 gt2 as well also known as the widow maker but we've got some more next door so let's go and have a look there as well moving on we've got loads more in this room here we've got a 996 gt2 club sport which is quite a weapon. We've got another one here belonging to JK, which has been sold. That's off on its way to Japan via air freight. So the guy's obviously very keen on getting that over there as soon as he can. We've got a lovely 10,000 mile GT3 RS just here. Um, gorgeous 911E. This one's just had pretty much a full restoration, um, at least mechanically. There's a few bits that could still be done, but matching numbers car, that's absolutely glorious. I mean, just, just where do we begin? You know, there's, it's absolutely stunning. Here we've got a full-blown 993 race car, another 996 GT2. And here we can't, I mean, I know we're in Porsche heaven, but we can't not mention the prototype McLaren Senna GTR. This is the one that's probably got the most miles on. And this actually belongs to the guys at Topaz, who you're probably very familiar with. And here we've got the last of Jamiroquai's cars to be on site here at JZM. This is the 575 Super America, which is just glorious. Like I say, I know we're in Porsche heaven, but we've had to divert a little for the last couple. Now let's get the exhaust loaded up, jump in the G63 and head on over back to the museum. Now I know we said we were leaving and gonna jump in the car, but we couldn't not very quickly come outside and talk about this. This is of course a 911 Speedster in a one-off color that's actually been done in peelable paint. And this, funny enough, is owned by Johnny from JCR Racing, who supplied the exhaust that is on the GT4. And it's a stunning color. I'd love to tell you what it's called, but I'm not sure. Maybe we'll have to have a word with Johnny on that one, but we couldn't not quickly show you guys this before we leave. Just left J's and M, back on the M25, which means we have an opportunity for some V8 noises. Now, I know the walk around in there was quite sporadic and a bit random, but I just wanted to pick out some of my highlights from inside. Um, they've got some stunning cars there. I mean, especially that 911R and the Speedster. They are absolutely stunning cars. So, we're on the road. Let's get back, get this unloaded, and see what's next on the agenda. We are back. We are. Time to get this one unloaded. And... Uh, Put over there with the rest of the stuff that you want to clean up. <laughs> I've made a little bit more room for you. Ah, awesome. Just next to the other exhaust. I don't know if it's actually going to fit though because the box is a lot mm. bigger than... There we go. Sorry, Tim. It's already broken. I'm just going to... It's already broken. Don't get too mad. Yeah, we don't just have spare centre wings lying around. No, but That'd we... That'd be cool. It would. We do happen to have centre wings laying around, but of course this is when it was unfortunately involved in the accident. I mean, this piece here is actually mostly okay. It's just, it's just got a bit of a break here, which you can sort of see there, which I'm not gonna go any further with it or we will break it and Tim will really get upset. But that's now unloaded. Guess we should get this part back up. Next up on the agenda is to get some of the Schmierman bills cleaned. Now, the GR Yaris and the 675LT are next to go. That's why they are now positioned here. There's a few cars that we've cleaned, the Senna we did recently, the Ford GT wasn't done that long ago, the Clio we're gonna leave, and there's a couple others that will be coming out to be washed. But first up, outside, is the Aston. So let's pop out and see how the GT8 is doing. And here is the GT8. The guys down from Koi Detailing have popped around to give as many Schmierman builds as they can a clean up today. 
starting with the GT8 in its blue and orange colorway. Cars just look so good when they're snow foam. But we'll let these guys crack on with the GT8 and we will catch you guys shortly for the next car. Car number two, the little GR Yaris. And now we've hidden the livery and it's back to being a white GR Yaris with white wheels and white tires apparently. DLT is now out for its wash by the guys at Koi. Just working on the wheels, the whole car's been snow foamed. Barrel brush is getting right into the wheel barrels. It is looking good. Anyway, we've got a few cars to move around inside. So we're gonna do that and get them ready to pop out. And uh, we can show you where the two clean cars, the Yaris and the GT8 have been parked. This is where we've parked the GT8 and the GR Yaris, just sort of out the way. They've had the exterior washes, they're ready for the interior, but we're gonna get the rest of the exteriors done on the other cars before we start on them. Tom is about to unplug the SeaTech Smart Charger from the C and also from the G63, as they're the next two cars to go out for a wash. We've had a little bit of a hoover where some of the cars have been, just to try and reduce a little bit of the dust. And Tom has put some markers down with some tape so we know exactly where to park the cars back, which should make it nice and easy. There's your G-Wagon cold start. Seeing you didn't get one in the previous segment of the video where we went over to JZM. That is the standard museum cold start of the G63. We could have not put one in because it does sound ridiculously good. Schmeemobil number four. C63 Black Series, well in need of a wash. Obviously the wheels were recently refurbished by the guys down at Whoops, which have come up amazing. The G63 is up next, and seeing as the boys are working so hard, we've given them a couple of excites just to help them get through the day. It's time for the Senna. Well, in fact, it's almost finished. Just being rinsed off, and then it will be taken back inside, and the next car will be brought out. We obviously want to give a big thank you to the guys at Koi for coming down putting in a lot of work, trying to get through as many Schmimobils as possible. We love the side of the van as well. It's pretty cool with the Koi fish. The final car to be cleaned by the guys at Koi is the Focus RS Heritage Edition. Then it'll be time to pull this inside to join all of the other Schmimobils that have been cleaned, ready for the interiors to be sorted, and then they can be parked back up. Inside this museum, it's looking pretty bare. Tom and myself have cleaned up a, a couple of the spaces where the cars have been parked, which means that the majority that have been cleaned are now in the office. Yep, they're in where the office will be, but they're all parked up. Senna is done, G63 is done, C63 is done, the LT Spider is done, the GT8 is done, and the GR Yaris is done. The Vantage, Taycan, the M3 actually had a wash recently, but the Vantage, the Taycan, the Clio at some point will have a wash, and the GT, we also did fairly recently, so that didn't necessarily need one. But those are done, the focus is being finished off, and then we'll pull them back in and the interiors can be worked on as well. The museum is even more chaotic than normal. Tom is currently on the sim, trying to beat his lap time on the Nürburgring. The guys from Koi are applying the finishing touches to the exterior of the cars and starting their work on the interior. So we've positioned them a little bit better than they were just to give them some more room to work, but we'll let them crack on. We'll see how Tom is doing on the sim and then figure out what is next for us to do, which I assume will be park these back up into their spaces. Obviously some next to the Clio, cars next to the M3 and the Taycan, and obviously all the way up to the G, which will be right at the end. Here we have Tom, cutting the corners. Is the pressure of the camera gonna to get too much for him? All of the cars have been cleaned, thanks to the guys at Koi, and we've popped some covers just to keep the dust off them. The Senna has a cover from the 12C, hence why it doesn't fit very well, but it does the purpose we need. GT hasn't been washed at all, so it's staying as it is. Same thing with the Clio. The LT, we've popped a cheap car cover on just to keep it covered. Same with the GT8, and I know you guys in comments have been saying you need to cover the cars. Do you have covers? We have covers. The G63 looks pretty funny. We couldn't cover the whole thing, so we've covered as much as we could, which it will do. The Focus has a cover on, does the job. Same thing with the Yaris, and that was a bit of a struggle actually, which I think it's just quite wide and, and chunky. M3 was washed recently, but not today, and already has a bit of dust on it, so we've left it. The C63 has become a unicorn. It has a pouch for any of the, C, uh, any of the Mercedes with the stars on the bonnet. It has a little pouch for it, so we've left that up because why not? But that is covered, it's clean. It's an old cover as well, so we're not too bothered about it. 
And then finally, the Taycan and the Vantage Roadster haven't been cleaned, so they are staying exactly as they are. We've walked in this morning to another one of those things we never quite know what's going to happen, which is this box was delivered first thing this morning. And if we come in and open it up, we have already done so, so we do know what's in it. But we start with Hi Shmi, and then we see it's from the guys over at carspares.co.uk who were watching one of the previous videos and very kindly have sent out a pair of brand new headlight units for the Clio, which as you can see, the difference there well, again, I don't want to use the cliche night and day, but it is crazy. It just shows how faded and worn these ones are. So we'll get these on at some point and get this looking a lot better. As we mentioned at the start of this video, a little GI Yaris needs to go and have an oil service so we can start pushing on properly with this, effectively a running in service. So now it's time, let's jump on in, get it started, and get on the road. As you can see, we've made it here to the Toyota dealership. The GR Yaris is on the ramp now with the oil draining behind me. The guys are gonna crack on here with this, get that and the filter changed, and then we can get back on the road to the Museum. And just like that, we are now back from the service. The little GR Yaris has an oil change, oil filter change, and is ready for some more adventures. So we'll get it parked up, possibly put the cover back on, We'll have to see if there's any dirt or dust has been accumulated while we've been out. But this is ready to be put back up, put back onto its SeaTech Smart Charger, and we'll be ready for the next adventure. How you doing guys? We're here for the next round of bits to be done this week. And next up is getting the Focus RS out for a service. I did just record a clip of getting it uncovered. Unfortunately, I forgot to plug the microphone in because it's a very early start this morning. Uh, but this is going to be dropped off for its third year service, an MOT. I very much doubt we're going to get any footage of that whilst it's being done, because this one I'm just going to drop off and leave there. And Brad's going to meet me over at the dealership to bring me back here. So let's not mess around and let's get this one out on the road. It is a lovely morning. Sun is out, there's blue skies, no clouds, and we've just arrived at Ford to drop the Heritage RS off for its service. Tom is just handing the keys in now, and then we'll head back over to the Schmuseum. We're now back. The Focus has been dropped off for its service, and you may have noticed that the M3 is now under a cover as well. Tom gave this a wash last night, so we're currently hiding the front grill from you guys, which is growing on us just a little bit. Yeah, I mean, there's been a few comments recently saying we should probably park this the other way around as not to see the grills. Hopefully, putting it under a cover is the next best thing. I mean, truth be told, it was the only car in this end of the lineup that didn't have a cover on it, so I wanted to get it clean so we'd get that covered. But I, I do think, as Brad said, this design is gonna grow on us more and more, especially if this is the way that BMW's future design language is gonna go with these big grills. I do think we'll get more use of them in the future. Anyway, it is lunchtime here at this museum, and. A little bit of a throwback to what we did with the LT, but I have never been out in the Taycan. So you want me to drive that? Pretty much. I've never been in it. I've heard more well, from you. I haven't heard amazing things. I know you're not that keen on no, it. No, I, I mean, I make no secret. I'm really not an EV person. And as great as the Taycan is, it, it just isn't for me. It's, I, I call it very much the one trick pony thing. It does the acceleration. It does the very rapid 0 to 60 thing. But for me, it doesn't do much else. I mean, it is very comfortable. It's quite quiet, but it's, there's no emotion there for me. There's no soul, you know, something like you'd get out of the 718 GT4. Obviously, we're not going to get a cold start on this one, so. I mean, we can try, but you might just hear a whir of some electrics doing electric things. And on that note, let's grab the keys and let's go. Here we have the Taycan followed by a wild Brad, crouched down, lens in hand, in his natural habitat, taking photos. Now we're changing angles, trying to get the perfect photo. But in all seriousness, guys, there'll be some uh, photos coming soon of this on the uh, Schmimobile's Insta page, I'm sure, uh, and Bradley's page himself, so keep an eye out for these. 
and I think soon obviously we'll have to jump back in the car and see if we can get his reactions on his first ever ride in the Taycan. Right, we've had a break and he's come and he's opened up the boot. What's going on here, Brad? We've just run out of space on one of my cards. So new cards going in. Have we not been here about five minutes? We have, but I've got lots of photos backed up from our last shoot. So okay, we, haven't done, we haven't taken that many here yet. I it's was going to say, I'm quite confused if you've managed to fill up a card yeah. already. No, not yet. It's, we've only taken a few, but okay. I don't want to format the card, obviously, because then we lose everything I've taken before. Most of them are already edited, but we've now got no image on there. Fresh card, completely empty, so we can uh, carry on getting some photos. Time to get cracking, and then these guys can get some photos of the Taycan on some of the social media pages. And once again, we're here at one of our favourite country clubs. Yep. Um, We've got a few now. We have a little list building up of our favourites, but yep. this is up there. It's nice. It Very is. Nice. It's a lovely and place. With weather like this, I mentioned it this morning, but with weather like this, blue skies, no clouds. Well, it's funny you say that because I mentioned it just a minute ago. With weather like this, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we're dealing with. Shorts are out. It's got to be. You're in jeans. I am because I... Uh... Cold. <laughs> no, I just don't want to put that image on people, unfortunately, <laughs> whereas you... Yeah, Shorts not, will do. Shorts not, so, will do. Uh, not so thoughtful. But anyway, let's crack on because I'm hungry and Same. we need to go and do lunch. Yeah. So let's hurry up, get some photos for these guys. And I guess for Tim. Yeah. Yeah, Tim hasn't got any photos of this yet, I don't think. No. He might have a few from some of his trips in it. I think we've got a couple from when we did the drag racing um, from Roger Chan against the Senna. Yeah. Other than that, I don't think there is too many of this, so I'm sure he'll appreciate it. Yeah, it'll be nice. But let's hurry the, up. The colour's nice as well, actually, with the weather. Yes. Not to keep talking about the weather because that's all most British people do, but... Yeah, it's me trying to hurry up so we can get some food yeah. and you just want to talk about the, the weather. Nice. Typical British. Guys, it's I'm going to cut him gold. off. We'll see okay. you soon. That's it. We're back. Taycan's Park back up in its space. I've had to bear through that one, but we're suitably full and managed to grab a few photos of it as you would have seen. But I guess the main thing is, Brad, that was your first time in the Taycan. What do you think? It's a bit of a, a strange one. I mean, when we first went out, and I experienced the acceleration. I mean, you know, I went pretty quiet. Yeah, you, you did. I yeah. didn't really know what to say. It's one of those things that you think when you accelerate in a car with noise, you get everything. You know when it's coming, you hear a downshift. This thing just disappears. Like, I, I genuinely was lost for words. I didn't know what to say. I, I did think I'd broken you for a couple of minutes. I'm going to be completely honest. We did a cheeky little launch and it, it does go, obviously, when this thing has full charge, we know it's around about 2.6, 2.7 seconds, something along that, that, that it does do a 0 to 60 in. So it certainly is the quickest thing in here and it doesn't hang around. And it, it definitely, if you're not ready for it, as you said, and you don't kind of have your head on the headrest waiting for it to come, it can, it al it can almost knock you out. I, I don't know if it's that much, but <laughs> it's it not that much, but definitely comes as quite the surprise. My thoughts on the car, I mean, if we forget the sort of drivability of it and talk about the spec the color midnight green and those tech wrap with the orum gold wheels i love it it does I love look it. it looks very good i'll give it that in I, it would just be better if it was a panamera maybe 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 a gts there, there's something Turbo about S. the color scheme for me i love a good green car i'm yet to own one and i'm sure i will one day but i love a green car but back to how it drives obviously from the passenger seat it, it is ridiculously quick in i want to say in a good way because there's not really anything like it but as tom mentioned it almost is a one trip pony you do get a little bit bored of it by the end of the drive you do i mean the one thing i will give this as a, as a criticism the range of ability on the adaptive dampers from their normal mode through sport sport plus is huge you know when you when you go from even comfort to sport it, it's a huge step up but when you go to sport plus it really does change things dramatically it firms up massively and you actually can throw it around a little bit which is not something you'd expect for over a two-ton saloon car no not at all but even then it still does nothing for me so hopefully i won't have to go near that again in quite some time i mean i've had my experience now so i think we can call it quits this can now wait for tim to return and he can go back to commuting with it but i think now what we need to do is sort out a couple of emails and then jump in your car, actually, yep. so we can go and grab the Focus. As you can see, the Focus is back behind me, all parked up on its CTEC smart charger and, well, very nearly under its cover, at least, ready for the next time that's going to go away on an adventure. 
Now, as we said, we took Brad's Bath 124 Spider over to the dealership to collect that, which on a day like today, when it's 31 degrees outside, it was lovely to be able to enjoy some of the sunshine with the roof down. In fact, saying that, it seems every time Tim goes away, we get really good weather here. I mean, that's something we need to keep an eye on in future. Anyway, back to the focus. Now, as you guys know, that went away for its third year annual service and for its first ever MOT, which it passed with flying colors. But we have had some comments from some of you guys just asking, what is an MOT? So for those of you outside the UK, it's basically just an annual test that a vehicle has to run through once it reaches three years old, just to ensure it's in roadworthy condition. Checking things like tires, brakes, suspension, lights, even on the interior, things such as seat belts, just to make sure all is as it should be. Now, if there was any problems with any of these, the vehicle would fail and those would need to be rectified before it would be allowed back on the road. The other alternative is you could end up with some advisories, which will just be items to keep an eye on, probably get changed at your next service or at least before your next MOT. Now, I think that pretty much wraps up everything here for the randomness this week at the Schmuseum whilst Tim is away on his current Euro tour. There's only one thing that we didn't manage to get done, which I would have liked to, which actually involved the C63 Black Series, which we have seen a bit of on the channel recently with putting the wheels back to their OEM finish. But being a used purchase and not knowing the full history, I did want to try and get it on a ramp, get it for a mechanical inspection, and maybe see if we could get it on a dyno to see if it's still making the power it should be. Unfortunately, there was a bit of a communication breakdown between the garage we were going to be doing that with, so that's been put on hold for now. But hopefully, you guys have enjoyed watching some of the randomness that has gone on this week. We are so close to 100,000 subs now, so we want to say a huge thank you to each and every one of you guys who are watching, who has subscribed, and who are coming on this journey with us. Hopefully you're enjoying it as much as we are. So that's it for this installment, and until next time.